Okay, Bible and Daily Lifers. We are going through the New Testament in a year. We're in the book of Acts. Long book in the New Testament. And uh, we are just about done. We are in chapter 26. Now the story in chapter 26, you really have to go all the way back to chapter 20 to figure out what's going on. The Apostle Paul was with the Ephesian elders on the beach and he was on his way to Jerusalem where he wanted to go and he told them at that time I don't think I'll see you guys again and they were like well don't, don't go but he goes he goes to Jerusalem he wants to share his testimony there I mean he was a big deal in Jerusalem in the day in fact he was the one that brought the big persecution on the church and then he got converted so he ends up in Jerusalem and one thing leads to another and he gets arrested and uh, they bring him before the religious courts and he ends up appealing to Caesar. So as he appeals to Caesar, which he can as a Roman citizen, he's being passed right now from Roman governor, Roman leader, Roman ruler to Roman governor because he's appealed to Caesar and none of these guys want to send him to Caesar without any charges. So he's going from governor to governor and try, they're trying to figure out some charges because you don't want to be the governor that sends a guy to Caesar and there are no charges. Well, the charges are that he has uh, done some things religiously that the Jewish leaders don't like, but they can't find any Roman reason for it, but they arrested him, and now he's appealing to Caesar. So he's going from leader to leader to leader, and he gets to share his testimony. And this is what the Lord told him when he got saved, that he was going to share his testimony before kings, and now he's starting to do it. So we pick up in chapter 26. And it said, then Agrippa said to Paul, you have to go in the previous chapter and see King Agrippa's coming in to talk to him. And he said, you per have permission to speak for yourself. Go ahead. What do you want to say? So Paul motioned with his hands. He's one of those guys that talks with his hands. And he began his defense. And here's what he said. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews. And especially so because you're well acquainted with the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. Well, when a preacher tells you that he wants you to listen to him patiently, uh, this could be quite the long talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the Jewish people, he said, they all know the way I've lived with them since I was a child. Right, he was a rising star. From the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem. So he was known in Jerusalem for being a good Jewish person. And he was actually trying to get rid of Christianity because he saw it as a threat to the Judaism of the day. He said, they have known me for a long time and they can testify. If they're willing that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion. I lived as a Pharisee. So he's very, very strict, very legalistic. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I'm on trial for today. What's he on trial for? The hope? What hope does he have? He said, this is the promise our 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled in, er, in our earnestly seek God day and night. King Agrippa, it's because of this hope that these Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider incredible that God raises the dead? Well, that was the issue that Paul was preaching the resurrection and that's what divided the religious leaders and almost caused a riot. So, you know, the Roman soldiers protect him. He appeals to Rome. He says, you guys need to, you guys need to protect me. So I, I'm appealing to Caesar. His message was the resurrection. And this was the message that the Jewish leaders, half of them at least, uh, did not like. So he said, I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He was a persecutor. He was trying to shut this thing down. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. So I don't know if he was one of those stoning them, but he certainly voted that these people should die because of their faith. Many a times, I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished. I tried to force them to blaspheme. In other words, I tried to get them to renounce the name of Jesus, and to come back to the Judaism of our fathers. I was so obsessed 
with persecuting them. That I hunted them down even to foreign cities. Well, that's where he was going when he was converted. He was on the road to Damascus, and the Lord confronts him. A light comes upon him, and he falls to the ground. And uh, he, Paul said, who is this? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. On one of those journeys, I'm going to Damascus with the authority and the commission of the chief priests. They told me those guys from Jerusalem sent me there with letters. About noon, King Agrippa, I was on the road. I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. So it was bright, brighter than the sun in the middle of the day. If you've been to Israel, been to the Middle East, you know that the sun there can shine pretty bright. We all fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard for you to kick against the goads. Well, what are the goads? The goads are uh, those sort of pricks that you would push into the cattle to get them moving, kind of like the spurs that uh, some of these cowboys would put on their boots to kick into the animal to get the animal going. And then I asked, who are you, Lord? Now the Lord was speaking to him in Aramaic. He said, I'm Jesus that you're persecuting. That's a big uh-oh. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you've seen and will see, what you have seen and will see of me. So you're going to share the story of what's happening and you're going to share the story of all of the things that are going to happen to you in the future. You're going to share that with people. And he said, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, so that they might receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So I'm going to send you to the Gentiles. Well, this guy, he was all about the Jewish community. He was all about teaching the Jewish community. He was trained. He was trained by the uh, well-known rabbis of the day. So him going to the Gentiles, he certainly wouldn't suspect that. So then, King Agrippa, I wasn't disobedient to the vision from heaven. First to those in Damascus, and then to Jerusalem, and all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent, that they should turn to God, and they should demonstrate that repentance by their deeds. That is one thing to say, I'm coming to Christ, but you know, show it by your deeds. You know, get rid of the stuff that you're doing. You know, throw the stuff out that's bad. Uh, turn around, start living differently. That's why the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day, so I stand here to testify to small and great alike. I love that. We like to say from the guttermost to the, to the uttermost, from jail to Yale. We like to do it all. And he said, I'm saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen. This is all prophesied in the Old Testament. This is what Moses was talking about, that the Messiah would suffer and he would rise from the dead and he would bring a message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. The Messiah is coming, the Savior of the world. I'm just a servant of his, testifying. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. And he said, you're out of your mind. He said, your great learning is driving you insane. And Paul said, I'm not insane, most excellent Festus. He's preaching to these governors, just like the Lord said that he would. He said, what I'm saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with all these things. I can speak freely to him. I'm convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it wasn't done in the corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do. So he's sort of playing these, you know, governors, these Roman rulers against each other. Come on, I know you do. He's saying I'm crazy, but come on, you know, you know the scriptures. You believe me, don't you? Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you're going to persuade me to be a Christian? Do you think you're going to convert me? They see that Paul is trying to convert them. They, they let Paul speak and share his story, his defense his criminal defense, and he's sharing his testimony, and they get it. Like, ah, you're, you know, you're just preaching to me. You're just trying to convert me. You want me to come to Christ today? Paul said, I love this. He, Paul said, short term, a long term, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today will become as I am, except for these chains. I don't want you guys to be in these chains. But I wish you'd become like me. I wish you'd be free. I wish you'd come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The king rose, and with him the governor, Bernice, and those sitting with him, and after they left the room, they began saying to one another, that man's not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he didn't appeal to Caesar. So they really still don't know the charge to send him to Caesar with. And they're like, he hasn't really done anything. And if he didn't appeal to Caesar, he'd be free. But he appealed to Caesar. He's going to Rome. He's going to share his testimony in Rome. Amazing. So all of this, you know, we should be sharing our testimony, whatever our story is, whatever the Lord's done for us. 
you know, whether it's dramatic or whether it's not dramatic or, you know, whether, you know, we grew up in church or we grew up, you know, good people and the Lord showed us that we're sinners in need of a savior or whether we were reckless and criminals and defiant, whatever we were and are, he has rescued us and we share our story with others. So Lord, help us to share our story far and wide with those small and great, to use the words here in the scripture. Use our lives to bring people to you in Jesus' name. Amen.